Hi there, Don Spillane, President of Designing Financial Solutions. Continuing our series, The Essentials of Business Planning. And here's Tim Pickett, an attorney, an estate planning attorney, and he's going to talk about wills, probate, and trusts. Basic estate planning documents in California, the two that probably most people often talk, hear about or talk about are a will or a living trust. And a living trust sometimes is referred to as a revocable trust or an inter vivos trust or a family trust. They're all synonymous terms. Different attorneys, different advisors use different terms. But the reason why people use a will versus a trust is a matter of probate. And probate is a court process whereby in California, if you have assets in your name alone and those assets exceed $150,000 in value and you pass away, then those assets will be subject to this probate process. Probate essentially is a matter of a formal court proceeding. Uh, beneficiaries are identified, assets are identified, creditors are identified, and then when creditors are paid, then what's left over goes to beneficiaries. It seems like it's an easy enough process, but in California, probate is a very time-consuming process. A lot of court appearances, there are a lot of filing fees and other expenses associated with the probate process. It's just a long process. It is a, uh, a difficult process. It is an expensive process, and it's all part of the public record. So everyone would know what's going on with your life because all of your assets are part of this probate process because they're all owned by you individually. A will is helpful because it provides direction about where things go when you pass away but the will doesn't avoid probate. How probate is avoided with a living trust is rather simple. The assets that you have in your name alone, instead of you holding these assets in your name alone, you hold them in the name of the trust. And then you act as trustee of this trust, and you are beneficiary of this trust during your lifetime. This is a revocable trust. You can change its terms, you can put assets in, you can take assets out. There's never any negative uh, consequences to having the trust or putting assets in and out of the trust. Most importantly, the trust doesn't even have a separate tax identification number so that there's no separate tax return to file. Your social security number or your and your spouse's social security number either could be the tax ID number for this trust. And why probate's avoided is that technically because assets are owned by the trust, there's no probate when you pass away because you technically don't own anything. Your trust owns assets, but you are the trustee of the trust. So you've passed away your house, your bank accounts, they're owned by the trust. All it is is a function of going to the bank, recording uh, documents with the county recorder to say, hey, the trustee of this trust has passed away. The new trustee is now acting. No probate because, again, the ownership of those assets always remains in the trust. Probate avoided. So there is still some work with a trust administration but hopefully in a trust administration, it can be done much faster, much more inexpensively, and I don't have the court involvement. Properly established living trust and funded trust, if you're incapacitated, that successor trustee steps up and then can manage all of your assets for your benefit, even though you're incapacitated, you can't make decisions for yourself. But now you've got someone acting for you to make sure your bills are paid, make sure your tax returns are uh, being filed, Make sure, you know, whatever, um, whatever administration needs to occur with day-to-day -day life of your assets, the trustee is handling that for you. Thank you for watching. Please contact us for more information and a free one-hour consultation.